Not long ago, it was hard to see a bright future for Pullman, a once thriving industrial neighborhood on Chicago's south side. But today, developments in Pullman could serve as a model for other struggling cities in the Great Lakes region. Growing up, I had no idea the history that we had here, but I was a kid that rode my bike through the community uh, because it was seemed like you went into a whole nother community, a whole nother area of the city, uh, but didn't understand the history. Chicago Alderman Anthony Beal represents the South Side area that includes the Pullman neighborhood. He calls it a true gem. There's nobody in this community does not understand what we have here. They know we have a crown jewel, and so they knew we had to protect it. The Pullman neighborhood is named for the Pullman Palace Car Company, which built luxurious rail cars and leased the cars to railroads. The company was founded by George Pullman in 1867, and it was so successful that he built an entire town in 1880. It was part of a vision that he had to kind of create this uh, model town where people could live and work and uh, play all within the same neighborhood. David Doig is president of Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives, a key player in Pullman's recent turnaround. The interesting thing about Pullman is he owned it all. And so uh, he basically controlled his workers' lives. He controlled their housing. He controlled where they shopped. Things went pretty well in Pullman until the Panic of 1893, which kicked off the worst depression the country had ever seen. Pullman made the unfortunate decision of cutting people's wages without cutting their rents, and so that created labor strife. We have Labor Day today because of the, the Pullman strike of 1894. It had some ups and downs as well. There were a couple of labor unrests, uh, one of which was the Pullman uh, sleeping car porters, which were the black porters who serviced the cars. Audrey Henderson is a freelance journalist who has written extensively about Pullman. Many of the Pullman porters were former slaves. Historians say they fueled the Great Migration and helped launch the Civil Rights Movement. And a lot of people uh, trace the advent of the black middle class to the Pullman porters. They were some of the, the first kind of formerly freed slaves that uh, traveled the country. Pullman and the railroad industry were booming until around World War II. Train travel really uh, declined sharply in the 1940s, and that coincided with the rise of airplane travel and uh, automobile travel, really replaced long distance train travel. The Pullman Company's fortunes began to fade. The last passenger car rolled off the assembly line in 1981 and was sold to Amtrak. It was called the George M. Pullman and is still in operation today. For a time, steel employed many in Pullman, but by 2006, the steel mills were gone too. A lot of people were out of work, there was a disinvestment, and there was a decline in population, a sharp decline. Then you saw the community start to decline as well, and um, that's when uh, the city came forward with this plan to build an airport. So when the Pullman neighborhood faced the threat of being bulldozed out of existence to make way for an airport, that's when the community came together to take control of its own destiny. In 2015, President Barack Obama designated Pullman as a national monument site. You stand on the shoulder of giants. You stand on the site of great historic movements. The historic clock tower building housed the administrative offices of the Pullman Company. $37 million has gone into converting the building and the surrounding area into a new visitor center. And that was really the touch point for, I think, the area's rebirth. So over the course of the last probably 30 or 40 years, you've seen uh, new investment come in. Companies such as Amazon, Walmart, and Method have all built facilities in Pullman, employing hundreds of people. Now we have interest from hotel chains. We have restaurants coming into the area. We have industry that's in the area now. Jobs brought people back in the community. The community itself, again, was very invested. There were people who stayed here and people who were very invested here and people who were very passionate and advocated for uh, Pullman here. One of the companies providing hundreds of jobs is Gotham Greens. Jen Frymark is the chief greenhouse officer. Its main facility is located on a plot of land in Pullman where a steel plant used to be. So here in Chicago, we have two greenhouses next door and the one that we're standing outside right now. And we have together about 175,000 square feet in Chicago. It's equivalent um, to about 30 times that area if we were growing outside in a field. So it's, it's a lot of lettuce. 
Gotham Greens employs about 100 people at its facility in Pullman, and Methods Pullman Plant employs about 100 more. Many of the jobs go to people who live in the neighborhood. We've done community benefits agreements with uh, most of those companies, and part of that is a uh, commitment to hiring locally. Uh, it also focuses on job training, and so uh, we work with the companies to get those workers prepared, get them ready for the jobs that will become available. They're not high-end jobs. The, the management jobs, of course, are high-end, um, but they're jobs that you can raise a family on. And that's one thing uh, that Alderman Beal really emphasizes, that he wanted, and the people here in Pullman wanted, and even the people in Gotham Greens and, and Method wanted, jobs where people could have, make a living, raise a family, and they wouldn't have to work two or three jobs. So these are living wage jobs. Alderman Beal says employment is up and crime is down. The population has stabilized. More people are moving in than moving out. The neighborhood now has the second highest home appreciation in Chicago. A lot of the housing stock here is very striking, very handsome. The end result, Pullman has been transformed from a post-industrial neighborhood with dwindling opportunities into a thriving green industry sector with solid, sustainable jobs. So can this be a blueprint for other struggling communities in the Great Lakes region? Pullman could absolutely be a model for other Rust Belt areas. Um, I would emphasize that it's not a utopia. I would also emphasize that it would require a lot of commitment and investment by a lot of parties. When we started the redevelopment of this area, we had over 77 community meetings. We listened to the community first, and, and the community told us what they were looking for. David Doig says revitalization starts with a focus on the assets that already exist in a particular area. Here in Pullman, we have wonderful historic housing stock. We have access to uh, transportation, whether it's highways or rail. Uh, we even have a port that can get uh, goods out to the Atlantic or down to the Mississippi. It might be historic buildings. It might be uh, a university, uh, an anchor institution. But build off of what you got, leverage that, and use that to, to drive economic development for the community. There has to be commitment. There has to be planning. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to happen overnight. And so you, there's no one template, but if you listen to the community and put the resources behind what the community is looking for and mold that into a nice redevelopment plan, I don't think you can lose. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.